It's uh, eight minutes past ten, and uh, welcome to uh, Capital. Uh, Leonard Skinner, welcome, chaps. We have Steve, Alan, and Ronnie. Uh, if you could just bring that mic a little closer to me, I'll just turn it down there. Right. Um, welcome, Steve, Alan, and Hello, uh, Hello. Ronnie. Hello. It's good to see you. The last time, in fact, we, we met was uh, at Nebworth. Yes. Which was, I mean, that was a great gig, that. I mean, I, I don't know if you were, if you were at Neville, if you'll know what I'm talking about, because it was, it was just sensational. I mean, what did you feel about that? Because there were, what, 250,000 people there, something ridiculous. Well, there was a lot of, pe there was a lot of people there. Uh, we enjoyed it, but I uh, wasn't quite used to the stage set that, that the Stones used. It was a little bit too high for us, but we enjoyed it. Completely, it was great. It was a lot of people. Because yeah. when you when you did Free Bird at the end, uh, and the way it sort of went on, everyone wanted you back, and you didn't come back. I never found out why you didn't come back. Well, it was a tight schedule. The whole show was running late. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know how that goes. Right. Anyway, I I was told a little earlier this afternoon that you guys. Um, I don't really want to start the interview on a downer. I was told a little earlier this afternoon that you guys had uh, a few problems at your hotel with uh, a few members of the band and the road crew sort of getting uh, duffed up and stuff. Yeah, that's not uh, a, 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 a few of the guys got into trouble with uh, the policeman's boxing team or something like that, Bobby's boxing team. Policeman's boxing team? Yes. <clears throat> Needless to say, they didn't come out on the top end of it. <laughs> they were definitely so, boxers. <laughs> yes, sir. a couple of guys a little under the weather, but uh, they'll be all right. So how, more how do you feel about coming back to London? Because the vibe is, you know, London's going to coming back. Everyone's very happy about it. And uh, tomorrow you're down at the, the world famous Rainbow. Yes. We, well, we love it over here. You know, this is our fifth time here, yeah, I think. Yeah, right. And uh, we just enjoy it. We love the people. And we're really excited about playing the Rainbow. We played here the first time we were over here. And uh, we really enjoy that hall. It's got a great sound to it. Fine, okay, look, we're going to be together for the next uh, 50 minutes or so. How do you guys feel about taking a few phone calls? Because I've got a heap of questions, but I know that uh, the listeners also have a heap of questions for you. We'd love to talk to people. Okay, so uh, look, if you've got a question for either Steve, Alan, or Ronnie, then uh, the lines are open now on 388-1255. Give us a ring, and uh, you can talk to the guys. 388-1255. We'll be back after this. Yeah. Okay, we've got uh, someone on the phone now. I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. I think it's Roger. Yes, hello. Right, hi, good evening. Good evening. Hi, right, have you got a question? Um, I'd like to speak to Alan, please. Okay, Alan's there. If I turn his mic on. Hello. Hello there. Have you got any particular favourite track apart from Freebird? Do we need your piece? Sorry, I didn't understand that. Um, do you have any track that stands out? Oh, nice, nice. Which is your favorite track? So, what do you mean? A Freebird. Yeah, Carpenter, the other one. Uh, yeah, the, fr the first album. Uh, I think. Any yeah, particular track on that? What do you mean, any particular yeah, song? Yeah, uh, he means any particular cut. You know. Exactly. Oh. On, on what album? On yeah, the first yeah, album. Yeah. On the first album? Yeah. Uh, we're starting off on a good note, aren't we? <laughs> it's all right. Uh, Truth I, is gone. Because uh, I actually have queued up Sweet Home Alabama. Roger, how do you feel about that? Uh, yes, yeah, it's fine. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's Capital on a Wednesday night, and it's your mother wouldn't like it. Special guests tonight are uh, the chaps, or three chaps from uh, Leonard Skinner, Steve Allen and uh, Ronnie. And in fact, that, that record, Sweet Home Alabama, um, leads me on to my next question about the... You have this, this reputation, I mean, Southern Rock is, is the sort of when your music is described, it's described as Southern Rock. Um, you do owe a great deal to, to that area of America. But in what specific way does it sort of influence you? Can you, can you define that? Talk about Neil Young, you know, and the Cotton. Sort of uh, I mean, you know, uh, what influence? It's, it's a lot of people from the South that, that did influence us, uh, if you mean that. But, yeah. Uh, of course, the brothers, uh, J.J. Kale, uh, Otis Redding, the list goes on and on and on. But, uh, 
kind of hard to describe, but southern music these days because there's so many southern bands playing songs, so many different types of music. Uh, country, like Charlie Daniels, and hmm. Marshall Tucker, Leonard Smith, uh, Wet Willie. You know, it's all very different, so it's it's very hard to say. Uh, <laughs> say that. You know, what well, is southern music? You know? Yeah. But people do describe it. I mean, like the, you know, the Allman Brothers, Marshall Tucker. I mean, all that sort of stable. Uh, there's a very sort of definite sound in it. I mean, you can listen to it immediately. Say, that's southern rock. And there's something there that describes it that you know makes you think that. And I can't define that's, it. That's probably just basic stuff. You know, twelve bar blues or just you know just basic lyrics, yeah. basic uh, simple, simple music. Really. Yeah. Most all southern groups play real simple. There's nothing. Uh, hard about it. In fact, I think we've, we've got a caller on the line called uh, Tony. Is that right, Tony? That's right. Hi. And you want to talk about roughly the same sort of thing, right? Yeah, it's that one point you've made, um, I was thinking of bringing up myself. But Sorry about that. Say thanks to the group for an absolutely brilliant gig at Nebworth in the summer. Uh, it's really been something that's stuck in our minds for quite a few months. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Absolutely superb. Um, there's something that occurred to me, uh, Ross, that um, having bought the live album, there seems to be something about a live gig that really brings Leonard Skinner way out and uh, above the standard of various on the studio records, which are a bit more laid back. Um, do you prefer uh, playing in front of people? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, and would you, um, do you prefer the bigger gigs, such as Nebos, or do you prefer a sort of smaller, intimate type of show? We prefer a, a smaller place. The closer we can get to the people, uh, the more real it is to us, and we feel more at home that way. It's easier to play harder that way. It's kind of hard to capture that type of thing in the studio. It's much more comfortable. Could you ever see that it's getting going back to small club gigs? We do quite a few of them in the States every once in a while. Just yeah. And what's that sort of in the local area of um, Georgia and that sort of... Texas, yes. Uh, Louisiana. Most, mostly in the South, when, uh, the places we played uh, before we started playing the bigger halls. Yeah. There's one thing that, that uh, we've read a lot about in the press here, and that is uh, the reputation that the band has uh, getting into drunk and fights. How much of that is really true, and how much of it is publicity? No, it's really true. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we, we have that type of reputation. We don't. Uh, Get in, oh, that's very hard to say, but uh, actually we're in, in the press so much, every time we step out of line the, the least little bit, then they really want to exploit that whole thing about fighting. Uh, actually, we don't do it any more than any other band I know. Good to hear. Anyway, we'll look forward to seeing you Saturday. Okay, Tony, thank you very much indeed for calling. Right. Cheers, good night. Okay, yeah. Tony Myers, who's on with The Late Show after the news tonight, you know, the clock. Um, Alan, if I can take you back uh, to the, the old days of Lemon Skinner, the, the very early days. It must have been uh, a bit of a struggle in those small clubs, all that sort of thing, all the local gigs that you must have done in those days. What was it, can you sort of describe what it was like in those early days? It's fun. <laughs> those were the days. Yeah. Uh, it was a struggle, but, you know, it was all fun. Do you, I mean, Ronnie, can you sort of well, describe I, I, actually, it? Well, actually, we were learning, learning to play together too, yeah. at, at the time, so we really didn't, uh, as we look back on it now, it's kind of hectic, but at the time, we never even thought about it like that. Right? Could you think it was the sort of good groundwork? Because you did that torture tour in, in late 74, where you did sort of 63 <laughs> dates in 85 days, or something ridiculous. Yeah, well, I mean, it must have been good groundwork for that, but that tour as well must have been a killer. Yes, we've done several of those, uh, what we call torture tours. Uh, and after about a month, you know, it sort of gets to you, know, you get tired and uh, get a little bit stale. And actually, as of this year, 19, this is the last tour right here in, in England that we're going to be doing uh, any length of tours mm -hmm. at any time. Like just, and concentrate more on the studio and, uh, and our writing and just uh, probably in a couple of weeks at a time here and there. Okay, well, let's go back to those those very early days. Uh, this is a track from uh, one else. Uh, 
Uh, London Spinners, and uh, give me three steps. 29 minutes past 10 o'clock. I can take you back uh, once again to the old days, Ronnie. It was after that album uh, that you met the amazing uh, Peter Rudge. And that's really when, when the thing sort of started, didn't it? When he invited you onto the Who tour. Yes, very well, nice. Uh, uh, of all the breaks we've ever had in music, I was here, but uh, Peter Rudge and Who was instrumental in and breaking the standard too. Because he is now, is he still your manager? Yes. Yeah. 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 And when's he coming in? He should be here Sunday. Huh? I'm told he has a clue, and, but he, he'll, he'll make it on Sunday. Listen, I was reading in uh, Melody Maker uh, this afternoon that there's an album that's around by Leonard Skinner that you recorded at Muscle Shoals studio uh, with Jimmy Johnson. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. <coughs> it's a really funny story. 1975. It was early in the month. So, you know, it was, it was uh, 69, 70, I think. Yeah. Uh, we'd done an album over in Muscle Shoals, and uh, when it came time to sell it to the record company, uh, uh, Jimmy Johnson, the producer, made a seven and a half copy for our manager, our former manager, I would like to speak his name, but... Anyway, he took it home before he took it to the uh, record companies and played it over his own stereo. And uh, somehow or another, he got uh, the tape backwards on, on the reel. And so when he went up to play it for uh, the record companies, they told him it was the most horrible piece of rubbish they'd ever heard. You know, Pretty much. <laughs> and, uh, never so when, found to it at all. So when we heard, when we, you know, we got the news about it, uh, it was broken hearted and all. You know, we thought we might have a chance to do an album, but the worst piece of rubbish in the world really hurt. You know. So we asked to have the, the uh, tape sent back to us, and we heard it. We thought it was sabotage or something, because it wasn't like that when we left the studio. And it was not until we did announce on our skin that uh, we brought that tape up to Al Cooper to show him some of the songs we might use on the album in an engine like this. Oh my God, this thing is backwards. So we switched the tape around and it was all it was. We like to cry. <laughs> well, there's another album as well that you were just telling me about. This, that's this the anthology. That is the album. That is so, the we, anthology. so we went ahead and did Pronounced and uh, went back to Muscle Shoals and just. Uh, Passed it up a little bit, and it should be out sometime next year. And that was the sometime first album we ever did. Sometime next year? I mean, this year. Oh, me. great. At the end of this year. Great. Okay, um, right, I believe that Rory and Stephen are on the floor. Rory, good evening. Welcome to Capital. Okay. Hi. Well, just thought I'd say that I'm a bit, bit disappointed because I can't get tickets to see it. But anyway, I wish you, wish you boys good luck and all the best you can. Thank you very much. Sorry, you couldn't get yeah, tickets, right? Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay, good night. Uh, Stephen, good evening. Hello. Hello. Um, this is Stephen Richard here from Stroke College. Hi, Steve. And I'd like to speak to Ronnie, please. Okay, Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. Hello, Steve. Hi. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. We've been together for 10 years as a group. 12. 12 years as a group. And how long were you together at high school? Uh, that goes back a while, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. so it was a, a couple of years, you know, a couple of years from last And what's the feeling between the band on and off stage now? I mean, you know, are you getting ready to a or what? No, not at all. Uh, well, actually, there's only three of us, uh, Gary, Al, and myself, that's, that's been together that long. But, you know, I mean, we walk and talk and uh, speak in harmony. I mean, we just know each other so well that uh, if there's any decisions to be made or any, anything that any one of us can speak for the other one at any time without even thinking about it because we know the other two would think the same. Yeah. So great. Thanks a lot. I'll, I'm coming off the rainbow on Thursday and Friday to see you. Hope so. you enjoy the show. Okay. Yeah. Just Steve. Oh. Might better turn my mic on. Steve, thank you for calling. In fact, talking about the rainbow, uh, you were saying, actually, Steve, you've been um, very quiet. Turn to you now. Oh. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, Ronnie was saying earlier about this, about you recording a live album at the Rainbow uh, that didn't actually make its way onto a record, and then you went to the uh, One More From The Road album that was done uh, at no, Foxes. No, 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 no. Have I got it wrong? Yes, Sorry about that. Yes. All right. Right. When we decided to do... Straight now. Okay, when we decided to do uh, a live album, <coughs> the Rainbow was our first uh, place we had in mind to do it. For sound. For sound, and, and after it closed, uh, 
then we went to the Fox Theater and, and, and went in. Sorry, Steve. Right. That is the album. Uh, one more from the road, and that was uh, Crossroads. Talking of gigs, uh, the thing that really characterizes your gigs, and I don't know if it's changed, um, but the thing that really characterizes the gigs, that there's no really fancy lights or uh, strobes or embellishments or, you know, it's just, sorry, you can put the bottle down there. Um, <laughs> Or, or sort of any any stage things. I mean, you just get out there with the guitars, you plug in, and you go for your life. Um, which is fairly rare these days for bands to go out. I don't know if the show's changed, but you know, every time I've seen you, it's, it's, uh, the stage show itself is very um, straight. Yeah, which I very much to keep it where you're just trying to play tight is, is what we like to do, and playing real tight, you don't have to have some a chance to put on a great show and anything like that, and especially with three lead guitars, and uh, you have to worry about staying in tune and all. There's a lot, a lot that goes into just trying to do that, which is difficult for us sometimes to do, and that's what we enjoy doing, just going out and playing it straight up, because that can be hard to... Yeah, and having fun doing it and making people... Yeah, have fun. You know. But but now that you're you're beginning to sort of get in the in the Premier League, so to speak, of a rock and roll band, I mean people tend to expect it becomes the sort of natural thing to have, uh, you know, flashing lights and films and smoke and you know, gold nose. Yeah, I don't, well, well, not necessarily yeah. dinner, but I mean you know what I mean. Uh, uh, just do you ever see any time? Yeah, uh, yeah. the actors. No, I think a live show could be better. I mean, sometimes Alan's playing so well and, and the light man might have the spotlight on the drums, you know, it's not tight that way. <laughs> we try to work on, you know, just making it look a little better, but the band itself is super is straightforward. We have no, no plans to change that at all. Good. Yeah, good. Okay, I believe that uh, there is a native American on the, on the line. Uh, Kim. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Fire away. Okay, Alan, uh, I guess. Um, I was wondering if you were going to be doing any gigs or anything near California or Texas this summer. Uh, yes, I believe there is a few. Yes, outdoor shows. Yeah. Great. Anaheim and Dallas. Anaheim and Dallas. Great, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> are, you, are you going to the Rainbow Camp? Um, no, I can't make it. So I wish I could, I really do. Um, what are you planning on doing in the near future? Anything special? Just making an album and uh, making another album. Uh-huh. Touring some more. Okay. Kim, thanks a lot. Okay. Have, a, have a safe visit back to America. Okay. Um, Andrew, I believe, is on the blower. Hello, Andrew. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, do you think I could ask Artemis, Kyle? Uh, so sorry? Well, could I ask if there are any... <laughs> Riding tracks like Freebird into band tensions. Uh, ask you about, I mean, well, squabble and what, what um, riffs you should do. No, we never squabble about that. Yeah. We, uh, and Artemis, no, we don't have any trouble with him. He plays his drums uh, to exactly what, uh, what he feels like doing it, you know, and. Uh, he does it quite different the way that Bob Burns, our original drummer, uh, did it. But uh, no, he, he doesn't write music, but he writes his own yeah. drum parts to the music. Okay. That's complete freedom. Thank you. All right, Andrew. Thanks for calling. Good night. Okay, from uh, the album Not the Fancy, that was uh, on the hunt. In about, uh, what, 30 minutes' time, it'll be Tony Myers on the late show. Uh, and unfortunately, we've got to close the lines now because uh, Tony Myers, as I said, is coming on. However, the last caller, I believe, is Andrew, and he's up next. Richard? Hello. Good evening. Hello. Yes, of course. Thank you. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, I just want to know, um, what's the difference between the sponsors of the audience of the gig seeker in Britain and back in the States? Ah. Uh, in Britain and the States. The halls are here are much smaller. That's the only difference. In the States, you've got a lot more people and bigger halls, and they can cause you a lot more trouble than they do here. 
course, there, there, there's always this old chestnut about the, the differences between the actual Americans and the English, that the English are supposedly I think, more laid back. I think also the English uh, show more at the end. They uh, listen to the whole part and uh, at the end show appreciation if they like it or not, more so than American. Uh, from the very first, you know, from the start, mm. they're uh, out of their head. into it, right. Yeah. Okay, well, seeing as we're talking about, you know, audiences at the end, uh, as at Nebworth, you finished with uh, an incredible version of Freebird. And this is something that's become your sort of theme tune. And, uh, you know, whenever you say Leonard Skinner, everyone goes, oh, Freebird. Um, you've been playing it now for a, a hell of a long time. Does it ever get to the stage, especially at the end of a tour, when you when you come up to the sort of the end of the show, and you know, right, okay, Freebird is next. Does it ever get to the stage and go, oh no, not that again. Let's get that out of our system. Let's do something else. No, I would say Freebird is probably the funniest thing I'm going to do. You know, it's probably put it last. It's time to do that every every once in a while. I mean, but uh, you owe that to the people, and so we play that song every. Every time we play, and we have ended up with it and done it for an encore for the past couple of years. Is it right that it started out in the in the early days when you were playing the clubs as, as just a filler song? That's that's very true. Eight years ago, we used it uh, when you're doing clubs in America. You you do four forty fives a night, and so we try to do Freebird at least uh, a couple of times a night, and, <laughs> and uh, we just used it to take up time. You know, to take care of the last 15 minutes a couple of sets a night. And I mean, yeah. bands, bands like, say, uh, The Who, for instance, uh, and won't get forward again. I'm sure that Pete Townsend is sort of a bit peeved that everyone thinks that The Who is synonymous with won't get forward again. Does it does it ever worry you that you are synonymous with a number that you've been playing for, like, years and years and years? That, no, you know, that is the thing that is my Not at all. Uh, to many people. No, I don't. Uh, I wish we could write a couple more, huh? but that's what they want to hear. We owe it to the people, so we're proud of that. One, one, uh, one time a night thing, also. <laughs> Takes a lot of energy, yeah. Anyway, good luck at the Rainbow tomorrow night, and uh, the next three nights at the Rainbow. Mm -hmm. We will have a good time. Welcome to London. I hope that uh, the problems you had in your hotel are uh, sorted out. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night.